Last week, a federal judge barred former pharma CEO Martin Shkreli from participating in the pharmaceutical industry for life after he and his company artificially and illegally inflated the price of the life-saving anti-parasitic drug Daraprim by some 5,000%. The judge also ordered Shkreli and Vieira Pharmaceuticals, LLC, to forfeit $64 million in profits. Weighing in on the verdict, New York Attorney General Letitia James said, quote, Envy, greed, lust, and hate don't just separate, but they obviously motivated Mr. Shkreli and his partner to illegally jack up the price of a life-saving drug as Americans' lives hung in the balance. Uh, what's amazing about this is that... Uh, it, She's people are talking as if they have we have solved price gouging in the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry. Like we got, we got him, and he, he's also been he's been in jail a while. He's he's gonna, I think he got a seven year sentence, and uh, you know, like scummy guy, no doubt about it. But not a especially if he's barred from participating in the pharmaceutical industry, he's not really a danger to society. So why he, he has to rot away right. in prison for years and years and years? And what he what he did is what the pharmaceutical industry right. does. His crime was being a d bag about it, right? And was being the most hated man in America. It was very clear that once he became the source of so much vitriol, that they were going to find a crime that he had committed. Right, and it wasn't that really. It was, it was it was lying to investors. Right, it was lying in some SEC documents. Right, right, or right. fudging in some SEC right. documents. The kind the of usual obstruction of justice, perjury racket that you can get literally anyone on. If, yes, if, <laughs> if anyone on earth, if the government tries hard enough, they can convict you of these crimes. If you said to a team of prosecutors, you know, look at this public company's filing, and find me a crime, because this guy's a douchebag, I want him down. You could take him down, like all, you know, the the fact that he had gone so far overboard, mm -hmm. like these, you know, a, a lot of big pharma companies will settle for uh, Joe Manchin's daughter Heather Brush. She settled for a six hundred percent increase in the price of EpiPens, a reasonable six hundred percent. He goes for five thousand percent. It's almost like he's. I'm, I'm joking about reasonable people probably died as a result of not being able to afford EpiPens and then going through into, into you know, uh, it go, what do you call it, aphylactic, whatever it is. Aphylactic shock. Yeah, yeah. aphylactic shock and not having an EpiPen uh, near you. He, he, goes through, he goes for 5,000% 5, because he has a, a, a drug that is desperately needed by a very small number of people. Yes. Who are just going to pay whatever they need to pay to, to stay alive. Uh, and so it, it, was, it was taking it to that extreme. Uh, that enabled prosecutors and then being a jerk about it at the same time that enabled us to say, okay, we're going to take this guy down. Meanwhile, the system not only goes on as it did before, they couldn't even take a mild little chunk out of it in Build Back Better because Kirsten Cinnamon, and Joe Manchin wanted to defend pharmaceutical industry profits. Well, my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, of what went wrong here is actually there is a, a bit of a government failure angle because there's not a, for this drug, Daraprim, there's not a generic, uh, there's not a generic one, there's not a generic competitor. The FDA has an approved one because mm. of, it's difficult to, it's, because of the regulation, you have to um, run tests against the existing drug. And because it raised the price of the existing drug right. so much, they would have to, some competitor coming along would have to have bought so many doses right. of this now outrageously expensive drug that they wouldn't be able to do a trial that the FDA would then approve and you could have a competitor. Because right. if anybody can make, anybody can make the, not anybody, literally anybody, right. but anyone with medical understanding and some f uh, uh, financing could make a, could undercut him and then it doesn't matter that he's raised it to that price. But the, right. the process of getting rival drugs is so, the, and the IP is protected and all that is, uh, is it, it really rewards people who behave like he did. Right, right. It's, it's almost as if the system was built by the incumbents to protect them. Hey, protect how about themselves. that? Yeah, so. You, just yank that ladder right, right on up. You could, e you could easily think of regulations and, and new, new laws that's, that still allowed pharmaceutical companies to enjoy obscene profits from their, their discoveries, which they make largely with public dollars, let's not forget that, uh, yet uh, create a regime that would allow generics to have access in, a, in an affordable way to, to run tests. Because it is absurd if you put up such a barrier to creating a generic that a generic 
can't be created, which then allows you then to just continuously raise the price even more. And that's how you can get to something like 5,000%. Obscene, obscene. Yeah, yeah and, and then they, and I think that the, the small change they made didn't even matter because they, they uh, agreed to lower the price, but it was just, I think it was just for if you take it at the hospital or something. So, yes. But it was not, but most people take it at, uh, apparently, not, I don't know, but most right. people ailing from this take it at home. So it, they were still gonna pay the full price of it. Right, we could look at this and recognize how broken our system is and fix it. Or so we can feel benefits. good about ourselves that Pharma Bro is yeah. in jail. Or we can just throw Pharma Bro in jail. Yeah. Guess which one we did. Guess which one we did. <laughs> we'll have more rising right after this.